Hello, this is Brother Kevin, and I'd like to welcome you to uh, Wellsprings Ministry Ustream, and uh, I'd like to thank uh, Pastor Joe and Ruth Verona for allowing Sultana and I to use uh, this vehicle uh, for being able to talk to you in real time and being able to minister to you in real time. Now, we won't be doing, we won't be using this feature after this week uh, because the vigil is almost over. Uh, we just have a few days left now, and uh, I need to share something with you so that you understand how things work in the spirit. You know, we judge things a lot of times by numbers, but sometimes numbers can be deceiving. Now, I'm not trying to say, oh, you got a few, God doesn't look at that, you know, he looks at, uh, that's not where I'm coming from. What I'm saying is, you can't always look at numbers to this point of view. A lot of times when the Lord asks you to do something, He's asking you to do something and it has spiritual spiritual consequences. So you do it in the realm of the Spirit. You step out in, in faith and obey God and what He's commanded you to do and you leave the results with Him. I haven't received any calls or any emails that I know of uh, that says that, you know, we got more people coming if anything it's less than when we started if I had to go by the natural eye but that's not why I did it I didn't do it for any natural success I did it because God told me to and I'm leaving the results with him I'm going to be continuing to do the Lord's Prayer and I will be doing just I will be doing not necessarily a live broadcast but I will always do a video uh, at least once a week so that those who want to do the Lord's Prayer can always go to our site and get um, a fresh word and I'm also going to be doing some uh, some special teaching on um, spiritual warfare which will be handy it won't be spooky stuff it'll all be practical stuff because that's that's what God has told me to do I, I very seldom get into real way out stuff I just like to do things in the word that are practical that's already there in the word not getting too much in extra biblical re revelation which I personally don't believe in okay I believe everything is is centered in those 66 books and even though I will read apocryphal books uh, and other things like that because I find them interesting but when it comes comes to standing on the word it's the canon so anyway uh, I'd like to welcome those of you who have just, you know, come in contact with us for the first time. Um, this video will be loaded up on Reformation and Revival Now, those who follow me there. Um, and some wonderful things are happening, of course. Our pastor has a word, and I'd like to share that word with you for those of you who are watching live and for those of you who will be seeing this on Reformation and Revival Now. Greater things in 2016 greater things it's what the Lord shared with him and I'll keep I'll keep you posted on uh, what our pastor will be uh, sharing and doing concerning that uh, our church had a fantastic year uh, last year but it was also a year of great trials so um, we praise God and we thank him for his faithfulness though God gave us successful things and in fact catch the vision was being seen around the world and we didn't even know it. So we just thank God for all that he did in 2015. But as Paul says, you know, forgetting about those things, you know, which are behind and going forward to those things which are before or ahead, pressing toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. You know, I always get that term mixed up. I don't know why. But anyway, uh, thank you for coming. Now, we've been dealing with nations and cities this week, but my wife had a special word. I hope you enjoy uh, what my wife prayed about. It's kind of a throwback to our first week. But in my opinion, what my wife prayed about is the most important thing that you have to accomplish in prayer. You have to establish, and I think some of you probably remember me doing this, but I'll, I'll do it again. You have to establish what I call your vertical and your horizontal. If you are not right with God, you're not going to be right with man. If you're not right with man, it's very likely you're not going to be right with God. So you have to watch both of them. You can't just say, oh, I don't care about men. 
uh, as long as I'm right with God. It doesn't work that way. The two great commandments say this, love the Lord thy God with all thy mind, soul, and strength. And the second one, Jesus says, is like unto it. So if it's like unto it, that means more than likely it's an inversion of the same thing. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So if you're loving God with all thy mind, soul, and strength, the love of Jesus should be manifesting in your relationships, should it not? If you're loving uh, God with all your mind, soul, and strength, then you will also lay down your life with all your mind, soul, and strength for your neighbor. So it's very difficult to say, I love Jesus, oh, oh, I love Jesus, I love Jesus, but you don't have really a heart for people. Don't deceive yourself. You're being falsely spiritual. If your relationship with God does not affect in a, a fruitful manner relationships with other people, whether they're Christians or non-Christians, it doesn't make any difference. Your relationship with people reflect your relationship with God and vice versa. So always keep that in mind. And my wife felt to minister to that. She didn't even do the template yesterday because it wasn't on her heart. And I was going to remind her why the broadcast was live to do it. And the Lord says, do not interfere. I said, oops. I said, well, okay. And he had to say it several times to me because I kind of get into a rut of things and we were supposed to be doing this. He had to say to me like four times, don't interfere with it. Leave it alone. So finally I began to say, oh, I see. And I sort of realized, okay, Lord, you want to deal with this subject again. So she ministered yesterday. Please go back and take a listen to that particular. In fact, it's on Reformation Revival now. So when you get a chance, uh, take a listen to it. Uh, because she's going to deal with some very sensitive things. And things that she actually experienced. Now, I know I'm kind of running on a little bit. But this is live. This is in our home. This is done in real time. Okay. Uh, my brother's getting ready to go to the doctor's office. My wife's going to take him. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't even know what I'm going to pray, except for that I'll be praying for the nations. I have felt to pray for the Middle East, um, and simply because the Lord has now given me the signal to go after ISIS. And we'll talk more about that at the end of this live broadcast. But now, Lord God, we just want to lift up the Middle East. Lord, I know that what you're planning to do in these last days, a lot of it, Lord God, plays in the Middle East. And Lord God, I lift up the Middle East where the contention is, where that war that has been in Abraham and Sarah's tent for ages. Lord God, I believe that you're doing a new thing and I wanna praise you, Lord God, that you're doing a new thing in the Middle East. What we see on TV, Lord God, is not what you see in glory. And I just praise you, Lord God, that your plans in the Middle East are good plans. And your plans, Lord Jesus, will bring the glorious gospel, Lord God, into the Middle East like never before. In fact, Lord God, I praise you for Israel. They are the descendants, Lord God, of the seed that brought Christ. But Lord, I also praise you, Lord, for Ishmael, because you said Ishmael would be great and that they would have ten kings. And so, Lord, I ask, Lord, that you would bless the descendants of the ten kings of Israel, as I'm of Ishmael, as I'm asking you, Lord God, to bless, Lord God, the descendants of the twelve tribes of Israel. Lord God, I just give you the glory, Lord Jesus, for these two brothers, though they're half brothers. I just praise you, Lord Jesus, for Israel, and I also thank you for Ishmael. And I ask you, Lord God, to be praised and worship of what you do in their lives, respectively. I know, Lord Jesus, that there's been tensions and war for years, but Lord God, there is no war in your heart for them. All you want to do, Lord God, is save them. And I thank you, Lord God, that you love them both. And I just praise you, Lord God, for what you're doing in the Middle East, because I can feel it in the spirit. And I praise you for your work in the Middle East. We can't see with our natural eye, but Lord God, we can see the results. And Lord God, I'm getting many reports of many phenomenal things that are taking place in the Middle East. So bless your name, Lord, and I worship you. Reveal Jesus Christ, Lord God, in, the, in this region, Lord, the Middle East. Reveal Jesus by the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Lord God, you told, Lord God, Jerusalem, you told Israel in days uh, of old, Lord God, while you walked the earth. You said, you will not see my face again until... 
you say, Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. And so, Lord, I'm praying for that divine revelation by the Spirit of grace and supplication to come upon, Lord God, Israel, to come upon its 12 tribes, Lord God. And I'm asking also, Lord Jesus, that upon the descendants of the, of the 10 kings, Lord God, of Ishmael, I am asking the blessing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm asking the blessing, Lord God, of the revelation of Jesus Christ. I'm asking for the salvation of Jesus Christ to take the Middle East by storm, Lord, by spiritual conquest, Lord God. I release the light that it shines in the face of Jesus Christ. May it shine, Lord God, to all of these descendants, both from Isaac's side and Ishmael's side, in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord God, there isn't a big money problem, Lord God, in the Middle East, that's for sure. But, Lord God, there are needs. And there are needs, Lord Jesus, in that area of the world. And I'm asking, Lord Jesus, that you would meet the needs. I'm asking, Lord God, that you would meet the needs of missionaries. Many, Lord God, people are being persecuted in the Middle East, Lord God, for the faith. And I ask, Lord God, that you would give them, Lord God, everything they need. If it's protection, Lord, give them protection. Divine protection, Lord Jesus. Lord God, if it's forgiveness, Lord Jesus, give them the heart to forgive their persecutors and their captors. Lord Jesus, whatever they need, Lord, finances, Lord God, I just ask for a divine loosing of kingdom finances for those in the Middle East, Lord God, that are reaching out to their neighbors and reaching out with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Lord God, I ask you to forgive the sins in the Middle East where there's been war for now, Lord God, many or thousands of years now. God, forgive the violence. Forgive, Lord Jesus, the, the cruelty, the finger pointing, Lord God, the blaming, the fighting over land, everything, Lord Jesus, that's going on, Lord God, in the Middle East. One speaking of one word against another, Lord God, forgive. Lord, they don't want forgiveness. They just want whatever they want. But I'm interceding, Lord, and asking you that you would have mercy upon these precious souls in the Middle East. That in the midst of this confusion, Lord God, you would spring forth, Lord Jesus, a heart, a heart of God in the people. That they will begin to respond to you. Because war and fighting, Lord God, your word says that the wrath of man does not work God's righteousness. And Lord, I'm asking for the working of righteousness by pleading the blood of Jesus over that Middle East so that you will touch the hearts, Lord God, of everybody there and allow the gospel of Jesus Christ to spring up. And Lord Jesus, I'm asking you for a miracle, but let there be, Lord God, a divine loosing of these relationships between Ishmael's seed and Isaac's seed, Lord Jesus. Though they surround each other, Lord God, I pray, Lord Jesus, I pray that you would open the door of ministry. Open the door of ministry, Lord God, where these relationships can come together, Lord, and begin to repent for their sins against God and each other. And Lord, I ask you, Lord God, to bless Israel and to bless Ishmael. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to cause them to bless each other and keep them from temptations, Lord God. There are certain things, Lord, that are going to play in the last days that I cannot stop, that my prayers cannot stop. I'm only concerned about one thing, Lord. I'm concerned about the gospel of Jesus Christ going into that Middle East. And I ask right now, Lord Jesus, that you, Lord God, will protect your children there. Keep them from temptations, Lord Jesus, that will bring hindrance and unwanted persecution, Lord God. If it's persecution for the gospel, Lord, that is accepted. But if it's persecution, Lord God, because of making bad decisions, I ask that you would give your children the spirit of wisdom and revelation to know exactly what you want them to do and keep them, Lord, from the snare traps of the devil. And Lord Jesus, I know it's difficult, but let the love of God flow, Lord Jesus, like a mighty stream, Lord God, of love, so that the enemy, Lord, cannot touch your servants until they complete their task. And Lord, I commit, Lord Jesus, all the souls in the Middle East to you, and I commit the church of the Lord Jesus Christ to you, Lord God, in that ancient land of the Middle East. Receive glory, Lord, and receive honor in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now I wanted to treat I wanted to treat this separately from ISIS because I don't believe ISIS has anything to do with uh, Muslims. That's just my opinion. I'm not saying that that you know I could be wrong, 
but let me share with you what the Holy Spirit is thinking of me. This is no more than an evil spirit taking people over. I would not put that, I would not lay that at the door of any of Ishmael's seed. I'm telling you right now, that is an evil spirit, and if it can take any race to cooperate with it, it'll take any nationality, anybody, it don't matter. That evil spirit wants to murder. The evil spirit wants to take souls. The evil spirit wants to spread fear. And so right now, as you're listening to me, you're going to see an assault. ISIS is going down within this year time or in, within a, a year, a year's time. You're going to see ISIS wiped off the map. And it's not going to be through bombs. It's not going to be through tanks. It's not going to be through talks. It's not going to be through that. The Spirit of Jesus Christ is going to infiltrate it. Now, let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we release the sword of the Lord right into that Middle East, Lord, and the sword of the Lord, God, into ISIS. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we ask your sword would go and, Lord, bring conviction and divine revelation of who Jesus is. I bind that controlling power. I bind that violent, unclean spirit in the name of Jesus. I break your stronghold and destroy your plans. God's anointing destroys the yoke of darkness. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we claim victory now. And we set, Lord Jesus, families free that have been deceived by the evil spirit of ISIS. We bind you, Satan, and you have no authority here because we are the authority in Jesus' name and we dominate you in Jesus' name. Our faith-filled words destroy your yoke of bondage. And we loose the light that shines in the face of Jesus Christ into the organization and into the families of the organization. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, friend, you just pray in the name of Jesus what the Lord tells you to pray. Because ISIS is going down. And he's going to use you, Christian friend. He's going to use you. The other thing is this. Muslims are being very, very hammered by this. If you know Muslim people, please encourage them. Grab their hand. You might say, you're compromising. You know. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Everybody needs to be loved and everybody needs understanding. This ISIS, this is a whole nother deal, guys. All right, now you might disagree with me, but I'm asking you to at least pray. Pray against this evil spirit. Don't let it operate. And, and, and God will uproot, will uproot it for the roots. And let me tell you, he's going to bring an infiltration of the spirit, which you just agree with me in prayer, an infiltration of the spirit right straight into the heart of some of the top leaders and will divide that house. Uh, let me share this with this word. This is an important word. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, said, I haven't come to bring peace, but a sword. Well, that sounds like a contradiction to me, but it's not. To the person that receives Christ, it's, he's the Prince of Peace. But to the person beside him that did not receive him, it's a sword. Because now there is opposition between who Jesus is and maybe the religion of the forefathers. It happened in the case of the Jews when people received Christ. I mean, a lot of Jewish people were very angry about that. So I want you to know that there's a sword of the Lord going into the ISIS organization. And the sword of the Lord is bringing the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ into those families and into those chiefs in the organization. And a, and a Holy Spirit explosion is taking place. And people are seeing that this is wrong for us to destroy our neighbors. They're getting convicted of sin righteousness and of judgment and you my friend are a part of that deliverance so pray with me stay with me on this we are going to see a miracle this year in 2016 and you're going to be a part of it with me well god bless you uh, some of you you'll see this on reformation revival now so Tanya and i are just praying that you guys will stay with us we only have a few days left in the restoration prayer vigil but hey there's no time if you're coming the uh, 11th hour that's okay. You know, Jesus came, told the parable where the master came at about the 11th hour and still saw people saying there. And he says, why are you sitting around doing nothing? Because no man hired us. Well, um, go into my vineyard. And so they went in the vineyard and then at the end, he gave everybody a penny. 
But the people that were there the whole day grumbled with those who came the last hour and said, how come we don't get as much? You know, we bore the heat of the day, blah, 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 blah. And Jesus said that the uh, landowner said, he said, why don't you just go ahead and take what is given to you? Didn't you agree for it? Didn't you agree with it? Are you angry with me because I'm generous? Take what I've given you. I'm going to give to the person that came last the same way I gave to the person that came first. So if you were in the beginning of the vigil, I thank God for you. Thank you for your faithfulness. But if you're just coming on now, I praise God for you too. And we need you. Come in and go with us. 2016 will be greater. That's the word God gave my pastor. Greater things in 2016 than in 2015. And 2015 was a good year for our church. So anyway, God bless you. I'll see you soon. Keep looking up. Bye-bye.